Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are gonna be talking about getting that video quality just right. And to do that, I'm gonna be giving you some of my personal equipment choices as well as recording techniques. Well, I feel like I'm making it some big huge deal when I'm really just talking to a camera. But I guess for some, that's pretty nerve wracking to put yourself on camera. So being able to check off all the other boxes when it comes to the video production, it might help lessen that anxiety when putting your face on video forever. Oh, and by the way, this video is sponsored by Type Studio. More on that later. Let's go from simple to complex. So let's start with video. Video quality is a nice thing to have. In focus, proper color correction and exposure. These are just a few things that are probably a good thing to have with your video so that your viewer is not distracted. Even slight changes in video quality can cause the biggest distractions. Video recording suggestions from my side are pretty simple. I think as long as you hit those three quality checks of focus, exposure, color correction, I think you're pretty good. And it doesn't really matter what type of camera you have. You can shoot with a phone camera or a webcam because most of these things can shoot in full HD these days and you'll be just fine. One thing that is really important though is audio quality. So many people tend to overlook this one when they first start out, but if there's anything that'll pull an audience's or viewer's attention away from a video itself, it's bad audio. If you're looking to invest even just a little bit for your recording setup, audio is always my first suggestion. Your eyes can deal with a lot more than your ears can, apparently. Having crisp, clean audio or even just decent audio quality will help keep your audience's attention without offering them some unexpected disturbances in the flow of the video that will 100% pull them out of what they're watching. But if you're looking to put a little bit more effort into this one, I would say, Try some test shoots. If all you have is in-camera audio, that's fine. Just adapt the environment that you're gonna be recording in to make sure that the whole experience is a lot more enjoyable for everybody, including you editing it. Thank you, Alex. Try to keep a quiet environment. So turn off any fans, any speakers, any people, and keep on going with your recording. Do some test shots so that you know where your audio levels are at so that when you go to record, you're not getting that good distorted audio. All right, next let's talk lighting. As third on the list, we can see that it's relatively important, but definitely not essential because a lot of these lighting packages are gonna cost you quite a lot of money. But thankfully, there are a lot of budget options. What's been working for me to keep both my face and my background lit properly is this ring light here that I have off screen, as well as this desk lamp I got from Ikea. All right, let me show you this. So this ring light provides enough light for my face to be illuminated uh, more so than the, the background, which is what you want. And the Ikea lamp is doing a great job at both being a practical light as well as the background light. As I briefly touched on a couple seconds ago, uh, usually having your face lit brighter than the background is typically the way to go, unless you're going for something a little more aesthetic. All right, so now that we have all the technicals figured out for pre-production video side of things, let's talk actually recording. Some people are very comfortable in front of a camera and kind of essentially wing it if they want. So if you find your inner Jordan Peterson and just wanna sit there and talk to a camera for an hour and a half and go in the editing bay afterwards and splice something together, by all means, go for it if you can. I mean, there have definitely been videos that I've made that I kinda winged it and just it worked out. But do I suggest doing that even for myself? Absolutely not. So with that being said, I started out just as many others did by writing and following a script. For these videos and the scripting, I kinda just write how I talk and it's a lesson I learned from my 11th grade grammar teacher, funny enough, shout out Mr. Marsh. And then I break each part into small little pieces and then record each of those pieces separately. So essentially it turns the video into short form memorization, which the American school system really prepared me for. So this is <laughs> this is why I do it, but I digress. So once you have your video scripted out in whichever way that you've deemed helpful to yourself, it's time to record. Now, don't be afraid to make a few mistakes because you can edit them later, as well as don't be afraid to play around with what you have written down, you know? You can just kind of go off the beaten path a little bit sometimes. Sticking to a script is the best way to get a point across, but also feel free to monologue a little bit because you might just say something that, uh, you know, fits well in the video. Some of the highlight moments of my past videos actually came from me just ranting for a couple minutes in between different takes. Cause you never know what you're gonna say. 
So you just say it and then you can edit it out later. So now let's just assume that you have the video recorded and you're ready to edit. And that is where our video sponsor today comes in. With Type, you can upload your video into the platform and it will begin transcribing the dialogue so that you can edit the video by editing the dialogue. Mm -hmm. If large video editors scare both you and your wallet, Type Studio might be the way to go with video editing for now on, especially if you're not actually a video editor. As a video editor myself, from my personal experience, uh, I don't use half of the effects that are in Premiere. So either I'm just a really bad video editor or most people don't need all those crazy things that come with those softwares. The cool thing about Type though is that it is a full-fledged video editor that is housed in the browser. So no need to download these huge sketchy files from the internet to use it. As an example, I'm gonna take this video I recorded and cut out any of the long pauses, filler words, or even just sections that I didn't like. Type also offers different add-on abilities, such as the ability to add text, add images, and even add subtitles. Once done, on the sharing page, you can download the video right onto your computer, as well as have the ability to download other exports, such as SRT files, which are subtitle files, as well as TXT files, and even direct audio files, if you're trying to get into that podcast game. All right, so those are my tips to record great videos in front of your camera. If you happen to find this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button and consider hitting that subscribe button for more content like this. If you wanna learn more about Type Studio, click here. If you wanna to listen to our latest episode of the Crater Come Up podcast for the Crater Economy people, click here. And finally, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.